Trying to decide if solar panels are right for you or not uh, can be a bit complicated. First, you need to know what the costs are. Uh, yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk about the cost, uh, what I paid for it, uh, how much I negotiated them down, and what other considerations were used to make my final decision. First, a little background. Yeah, location, location, location. Yeah, it's kind of important because costs can vary a lot depending on where you live. Uh, here in Southern California, yeah, we get plenty of sunshine uh, during the year, uh, but the cost of living is pretty high too, so therefore our electric rates are really high. As a matter of fact, our electric rates are some of the highest in the country. Yeah, I pay about a little less than $80 a month uh, for electricity and we use about 300 kilowatts which is not very much we don't use a lot of air conditioner or anything like that that comes to about uh, 25 cents a kilowatt hour yeah about uh, twice the national average so it seems like going solar here would be a no-brainer yeah well the only problem was the uh, solar installation would cost about fifteen thousand dollars and at eighty dollars a month yeah it's going to take a long time to pay that off so before it just wasn't worth it so what's changed yeah I've been thinking about getting an electric car and decided to take another look at the solar. It'd be so cool to be able to charge your electric car for free. I'll get more into why an EV makes sense to me in a future video. Of course, the romantic in me wanted to jump in and do it right away, but you gotta consider the cost first. Everybody knows it's gonna pay off in the long run, but it's still a lot of money. I decided to buy our solar panels, uh, but I know there are there's no cost solar programs where you're essentially leasing it. But uh, yeah, I didn't go that way for a couple of reasons. For one is, uh, these companies aren't out there to do you a favor. For example, in this chart, it's showing a uh, purchase price in the black. If you get a zero cost loan over here in the gray. And the blue line is the uh, cost for leasing. Uh, and you can see up front, uh, you got some cost here, but after about five years, your uh, total cost is going to be about the same whether you're uh, purchasing or leasing it but uh, after five year point uh, yeah uh, you're going to save uh, like twice as much or three times as much if you buy the system versus if you lease it and uh, if you don't have any upfront money then uh, if you can get a, a zero upfront loan uh, from your bank or whatever your savings place is it shows that that will save you money for the whole time over a lease so you really can't go wrong there they can offer you a lower monthly electric bill uh, anyway a few dollars lower but uh, yeah you still have some liability here if you have to re-roof your house for some reason you're going to have to pay them to have their solar panels removed uh, and then put back on again after you have the house re-roofed so yeah you've used all your savings up having them do all that work so whatever they make out maybe you don't so much when I started considering the solar seriously, yeah, I started Googling uh, how much these solar things cost and how much energy they actually get for you and all that kind of stuff. So I went on to some websites, uh, put in the calculators. Of course, they want your email address and phone number. And sure enough, within an hour, yeah, I got two or three companies calling me to give me a free in-house estimate. But anyway, that's what I wanted, so it uh, wasn't that big a deal. Uh, the first company came here was Sunrun. Uh, they partnered with Costco. So yeah, that's a name you can trust, right? Yeah, except that they're really expensive. They, even though they offer a whatever it was, $750 uh, credit card, not credit card, but a gift card at Costco. Yeah, they're one of the more expensive. So I think that deal with Costco is just a marketing agreement where Costco and Sunrun can both make money from a referral. So anyway, I didn't go with them. Uh, but I ended up getting five quotes altogether. Some from general contractors and other people from very experienced uh, solar installers. All these companies have their own little software on their laptops to calculate uh, how many panels you need, uh, how much energy you're going to get from the sun in the year, and what your costs are going to be. Some of them even had a payback type number. But talking to the sales guys and going over their software, yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, I learned that, uh, for example, I thought, well, maybe I should put some solar cells on the west side over here and capture the afternoon sun. That might give me a little more energy, especially when the rates are higher. But uh, their calculations showed that, yeah, if I put them all on the south, all 10 panels on the south side, I get 2% more energy than if I had put two over on the west side. So anyway, we put them all together, which is kind of a little bit easier. So that was fine. 
The other thing I found out is, uh, yeah, I was concerned about the shading from my neighbor's trees over there. Yeah, they're kind of tall pine trees, and about four o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock, uh, they start shading the panel, so I won't get any more uh, power from them. So anyway, uh, their calculations showed that I might expect a 5% drop in solar production, just based on the shading from those trees. So at 5%, I said, yeah, I guess I won't have to ask the neighbor to uh, cut her trees down or cut them off or anything. Yeah, who knows how that would have worked out anyway. Another question I had was about my electrical panel. Uh, this house is fairly old, it was built in 1954. So uh, yeah, the panel is maybe 100 amp, I couldn't even tell how much it is. But uh, some of the solar companies said it was okay, they can work with that. Uh, another one said, no, you need to replace it. But the uh, truth is, I wanted to replace it. Because my air conditioner over here, uh, it's a 16,000 BTU air conditioner on a 15 amp service. And yeah, when it gets really hot in the summer, yeah, the circuit breaker trips. So uh, anyway, when you need it, it doesn't work. So what good is that? It's time to get a new panel. They'll put in a uh, 200 amp service for me. And at the same time, I was asking about installing a, it's a 240 volt outlet for my electric car. Uh, it's an EV outlet. So they quoted that also. So those two parts, the charging outlet and the electrical panel, was about three to four thousand dollars from the solar companies. Anyway, I decided to get a uh, separate quote from an electrical contractor, figuring, yeah, maybe they can do it cheaper. So those numbers were kind of reasonable. Like, yeah, I could have got a little bit cheaper, but uh, the biggest problem was is that if I have an electrical contractor do that work, there's no federal credit for that. But if the solar company does it as part of the solar installation, it'll still qualify for the 26% federal tax credit. So yeah, it's a lot cheaper having a solar company do it for you. Now, as far as picking out the solar company, one of the electrical contractors, he did solar on the side, but uh, I couldn't find any reviews of people that were happy with his solar, and he wasn't able to give me any names of customers. So anyway, I decided that that was a pretty big gamble. I didn't want to go with him. So that left me with the established solar companies, quite a few in San Diego. Uh, it's a big market for solar here. But uh, I didn't go with the most expensive, but I went with one that was pretty good and have a good reputation, plenty of reviews, that kind of stuff. So the cost from them was initially quoted as $14,917. Uh, that included the panel and the EV outlet. So, okay, that was fine, but that seemed a lot of money for me. And yeah, I'm not sure if it was totally worth it. So uh, yeah, I needed to bring the price down. So anyway, I negotiated back and forth a couple of times with a sales guy. So we ended up at 14,250. So that seemed to be a reasonable deal and I thought that was okay. So based on that price, with the federal tax credit, my final cost is gonna be closer to $10,500. Um, and my payback time would be, if it was just the solar, then it would be six years. I recoup my sdg &E costs at current rates today. Um, including the electrical panel and the EV outlet, and it's more like seven, seven and a half years payback. But anyway, it could be even less, depending on if the rates go up. Knowing the cost of adding solar to your house is important, uh, but there's many other factors also to consider. A lot will depend on where you live, uh, what your electric rates are. Ours are very high, so it makes it easy decision. Uh, but uh, some, some states have very low electric rates or cloudy weather and not much sun. So in those cases, it probably isn't gonna be worth it for you. Uh, another thing is how much electricity do you use? Uh, here in San Diego, they charge you more the more electricity you use. And the rate's been going up like crazy. So another consideration for some people is do you have power outages? And if so, do you want to do something about it? Uh, yeah, so right now the uh, solar cells with a battery backup system, yeah, it's not quite economical yet, but uh, some people do it just to have that security so they don't shut off your power like during the wildfires and such stuff like that. I'll cover those considerations in more detail in my next video, and hopefully by then they'll have this thing hooked up and plugged in. So anyway, stay safe and enjoy the sun while you have it.